Hi guys, welcome. My name is Sarah and I'm with One of a Second Kind Designs. And today I am going to be showing you how I prep a piece of furniture for paint. Um, I'm working on a three-piece bedroom set that consists of, consists of a vanity, this dresser, and a full-size headboard. Um, I've already completed the vanity and I thought why not take you guys through kind of a series of videos from basically start to finish on how I um, paint a piece of furniture. So I'm we'll working on this dresser here. I've already taken off the hardware. Um, and it has this back piece, let me get you a little closer, um, back here that I'm going to remove as well. If there's anything on my furniture that can be removed for easy painting and cleaning, I will likely do that. Like my mirror that was with the vanity, I take the mirror out and just paint the, tr the frame of it. Um, that just makes it easier to paint the surface and seal it without getting stuff all over the mirror. So if I can take something off of a piece of furniture, um, it just gives a more professional result to, to paint it separately and then you know, place it back on when you're finished. So I'm just going to take this guy off, as well as the hardware. I'm going to probably, um, this is what the hardware looks like. So I'm probably going to go ahead and I am going to use these for these bottom three drawers and then the top two I'll use a different knob just like I did for the vanity. Okay, so what I like to use for cleaning is crud cutter. Um, you can find it at your local hardware store, Lowe's, Home Depot, even I think Walmart. And I like this, the cleaner slash degreaser. Uh, there's different crud, cut, crud cutters. I always have used this one. Um, I don't really know what the difference is between the other ones. I just know this one says it cuts grime, oil, tar, and wax. So a lot of these old surfaces have... Um, varnish and just years of built built up grime and grease so um that's what i look for is a degreaser um i will sand this as well because the finish is um kind of coming off in areas and it's scratched like if i can run my fingers and feel where a scratch is or feel where some of the previous finish is coming off then that is going to show when you paint it. I mean, because it's, it's, it should feel smooth. If you can feel something and you think slapping paint over it's gonna make it go away, it's not. So you're gonna want to sand out any imperfections before you start painting. I, everyone's like, why do you, why do you clean before you sand? Um, because you're gonna gum up your sander, your sandpaper, if there's, this probably doesn't even look that dirty. I mean, it is, it does look dirty. But you'd be surprised when I spray this, they'll just be dripping like orange and black crap off of it. So you will want to clean first, sand second. Um, and then you don't need to re-clean after you sand. You just need to kind of uh, use like a tack cloth or something and wipe all that sanding dust off before you clean. So this is concentrated. I, tip it, I actually never water this down. Um, but today I had to because I only had like this much left in the bottle. So I did add a little bit of water just to get me through this project, which I think that's okay if you want to um, dilute it a little bit since it's super concentrated. I do this typically outside and I am outside today because I have my kids running around. Um, because it, it just gets everywhere and it's, I've done it in my house and it's got like my floors all sticky. So I like to do this outside in my garage. So all I do is just spray. I want to have a couple of rags handy. Um, it's kind of windy today too. Just really saturate. Scour pads are also a good thing to have. This piece, I don't, it's not like so grimy that I feel I need this, like a, like a Brillo pad. So I just use a rag and I kind of let it sit for a minute or so. Uh, make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. I don't know what, yeah, I think that's paint. See how that's already kind of coming off? That's just paint. And then just wipe. Really that easy, guys. Um, again, if I saw like built up stuff, I'd go ahead and grab like a Brillo pad and scrub at it. I'm gonna show you this rag here in a second. And it starts to dry on, especially because I'm outside and it's 78 degrees today or something in Texas, so um, it starts to dry. So I just spray a section at a time. Get these legs good here.
Okay. Mama. So that's, can you see, that's pretty dirty. Um, it's not, I've seen worse. Um, but that's pretty dirty. It's going to be a little bit more in this area. It does seem like a little bit of this greasy film, or not greasy, but just like this, I don't know, just like a film to it. So I will take just water when I'm done and go over this again, like just like I'm doing, spraying it with water um, and wiping it down. That's just to ensure like that I am getting everything off of the surface. I don't want cleaning residue left um, on the piece because your paint will not stick if you leave any kind of cleaning residue. Okay, in some cases I will get a new rag. Like, if your rag gets so dirty, <laughs> And you just keep going, you're just spreading the dirt around, basically. So I will typically change out my rags. Every so often. I'll also clean in this video but I will clean inside the um, inside the drawers I don't think I'm gonna finish inside the drawers because they look pretty good but I always clean inside the drawers anyway regardless if I'm gonna finish them or not yeah see like look how dirty that is The place where dirt really gets into is these like crevices. So really clean those really well. That's when like a toothbrush comes in handy. Um, in fact, I should have grabbed my little toothbrush to get it like in here. So a toothbrush is a good idea. Um, what else? A toothbrush and a drill pad. Um, the back of this piece is not finished and I don't think I'll paint it but still I would always what is that there's something something stuck on it I would always um clean it Something here. I may have to just yeah. take a sander to that and see if I can't care what that is. Emmett, don't, honey. Huh? You're going to knock it down. Mm -hmm. 
sorry. <laughs> um, I don't know what that is. I'm gonna grab a, a Brillo pad, see if I can scrub that off here in a minute. But um, so I, yeah, the, the back is not finished, but I'm just gonna wipe it down anyway. Doesn't need to be perfect, but just a quick. down it has writing all over it like somebody wrote with chalk or something all over it so not like a kid or anything just like there's like numbers written on the back of it okay and then where did I do oh that piece I have done this before where I've forgotten about I like finished a piece and then I forgot about the back <laughs> they're like where'd that piece go I'm gonna go bind it and clean it and paint it So yeah, a toothbrush, um, I won't do that for the sake of just the video being really boring, <laughs> but I probably will, um, when I'm done here, grab a toothbrush and spray again and just kind of go in this like inlay here, um, scrub that out really good. Cause that's just where like a lot of grease and grime will build up is in that inlay there. So I should do that as well. And then, so I'm gonna get a new rag. And then this is just a bottle, new rag, water. Okay, that's all it is is water. And I always rinse off whatever chemical. Like if you want to use TSP solution, um, that's fine too. But you have to wash, as far as I know, you have to wash off the TSP solution. Because any residue left on your piece is not going to allow your paint to stick. Um... And the other reason I wipe this off is, or with my water is because if I look at my rag and see my rag has a lot of dirt on it, then that's telling me the piece is not clean enough and that I should probably go ahead and do the solution mix again. Um, there are certain types of woods that don't have like a varnish or like if I had a piece and someone started to sand it and it was, I bought it from them, let's just say the top was sanded off, okay? And the wood looked like a red, like a mahogany. And I go to clean it, my rag will be red. It'll just continuously red because that red wood will bleed tannins, when, especially when you get wet. So you'll just constantly have a rag that seems like it's dirty. It's really the tannins. Um, that's how you'll know you need to prime your piece. Any raw wood, anyway, I would prime when you're going to paint it. So. bed for someone and I don't remember it wasn't sanded I had to sand it a little bit but it was a dark dark red and man just the red would just be dripping off of it when I was cleaning it and it just continuously was dripping and I thought this thing is so dirty and then I realized like no that's just like the wood it's bleeding red so I primed it one coat of primer and I all this red started coming through two coats of primer it stopped bleeding, but I did a third coat just to be safe because I was painting that white gray color. Um, but it finally stopped bleeding, but it took three coats of shellac primer, or I guess two coats, to get it to stop bleeding. So my rag has been fairly clean. And then I usually allow, so for me, like my process for my pieces is I'll work on two or three pieces at a time, but I have one full day of prepping my piece, right? Prepping my three pieces that I'm working on. And then one full day of priming my pieces, not a full day, but a couple hours. Um, Cause that's really all I have in a day anyway of priming. And then, you know, day three is painting. Day four is transfers and so on and so forth. Um, so basically what I'm saying is I like to always kind of wait at least 24 hours, I mean at least 12 hours, preferably 24 hours, because I am spraying wood. So wood is going to absorb all this moisture and then you're going to lay paint on that. So that's not a good idea. So let really let your wood dry fully before you start painting. 
So this piece I won't, I plan to prime tomorrow. So um, once I go off camera here, I'll go back over this with the toothbrush probably in a few spots to make sure it's clean. Um, and then we'll prime tomorrow. Let me go ahead and see this guy real quick here too. I'm gonna sand him. So I am gonna sand him tomorrow, and then I could prime the same day, I guess. That doesn't, that doesn't matter. So I would sand and prime the same day as long as I have the time. Um, this, this does need to be sanded. The top is bad, and I'll show you here what I mean. Um, another good thing to have is something to open these drawers with. I usually have my paint can opener, because I don't think, yeah, that's not gonna work. Let's try one of the screws from the hardware. See if I can kind of get one of these open enough to spray inside of here. Should have done this from the beginning actually, but kind of smells in these drawers a little bit. So let's see what cleaning does for them. If cleaning is sufficient, it doesn't have a not like a bad smell, it's just like an old smell. So um, if I can't get the smell out with cleaning and then a little bit of like salve, like the wood salve from, I like to use Wise Owl wood salve, that stuff is smells amazing. Then these drawers are pretty, they're pretty clean. I'll take one out here. And same with in here, it's good to take all the drawers out anyway and just run a vacuum in here. You will find dead bugs and such. It just it just yields more professional results. I mean, it's like when you're loading this up in someone's car, if you have to take out the drawers for any reason, um, you don't want them seeing bugs and stuff. Like that. Uh, I mean, uh -uh. Here is kind of the inside of the drawer. So they're pretty, they're pretty good looking. So I don't typically paint the insides or the sides if they're in good condition. Emmett, don't swing that around at people, please. Okay, guys, so I'll pull all these out and clean this, but I just want to give you kind of the gist of how I clean my furniture. My kids are getting a little crazy, so I better go. Um, okay, so tomorrow I will show you, or whenever you guys see this video, I will go ahead and will sand it with my surf prep sander and then prime it with a shellac-based primer. So anyway, thanks for watching. You guys enjoy the rest of your day.